Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a very good day today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about five awesome mods that kind of fly under the radar. They're not as popular as, say, replacing tuners with lockers or swapping pickups, but they're still really effective. Now, a few months back, I did a video called 10 Mods That Will Transform Your Guitar. And in that video, I go through 10 of my favorite mods. So if you somehow missed that one, I'll link to it above. You can check out those ones first. But here are five more of my favorite mods that kind of not a lot of people are doing compared to, you know, the super popular mods. So let's jump in and see what they are. All right, now mod number one definitely flies a little under the radar compared to something as popular as, say, swapping your guitar pickups. If you like the way your guitar plays, but you don't like the tone, well, change your pickups. That's just kind of like our go-to mod. But there's another one that can have even a bigger impact than swapping pickups, and that is changing the speaker on your amp. For whatever reason, it's not nearly as popular as swapping pickups, but it absolutely can have a night and day difference. So over the years, I've done a bunch of videos on this, um, even, you know, taking a 212 speaker and putting two different speakers in it and, you know, seeing what that does to a cabinet or taking a, a really inexpensive mono price amp, swapping the speaker in it. I'm not a huge fan of the Celestion 7080 and they all come with that. So I've swapped a couple speakers on that, low end amps. So if you're interested, check it out on the channel, but absolutely will change the tone of your entire guitar. And yeah, like, like I said, for whatever reason, people kind of default to doing pickups but if you can use a screwdriver and a socket, well, changing the speaker is like a 10 minute job. Pull the back cavity cover off, unbolt the speaker, quick connects, put the new one in and you've got a completely different tone. So that's my number one mod that kind of flies under the radar. I mean, people do it, but not nearly as much, you know, as I said, as some other mods. And even if you use software, well, do it virtually. There's a ton of different speaker and, you know, dimensions and cabinets that you can mess around with. So even if you don't have a physical amp, you can still do it digitally and man, it makes a huge difference. Now mod number two that kind of flies under the radar has to do with swapping pickups, but not in the way you might think. Most people, when they get a lower end guitar, well, the first thing they do is take the cheap ceramic based pickups, throw them out and put in a nice set of Alnico pickups. This gives you a nice chimey tone, really open in the upper frequencies, but not as robust in the mids. So if you want a Strat, but you want a more, yeah, robust, big, fat tone, well, maybe consider going from Alnico pickups to ceramic. It's kind of uh, against the common thought, but it can give you some really amazing tone. And one of my favorite sets is the GNL MDF pickups. These are awesome pickups. They're really sensitive to height, and if you have them high, they'll give you almost a P90 type tone. Really growly, lots of output, and can really drive an overdrive pedal or amp, and they sound amazing. If you lower them way down, like right down to the pickup, well, they're going to give you an almost Alnico type tone. So if you slam them way down, you're going to get the best of both worlds. You can have like almost a P90 tone, almost an Alnico tone. They're really sensitive to height. Now, the second awesome thing about these pickups is you can adjust each and every pull piece individually, which means whatever kind of string set you run, if you want a vintage stagger, if you want mo modern flat, if you want to do an inverted curve, whatever you want to do, you can do that to your pickup. So they're so customizable, they're so versatile, and the price, well, they're pretty much the same price as everything else. So if you want something a little bit different in your Strat, well, check out the GNL pickups. I love them. Now mod number three has to do with tube amps. If you're interested in vintage or iconic guitar tone, well, a tube amp is simply the way to go, especially if you're in the same room as the amp or on the same stage as the amp. The interplay between the player, the guitar, and a tube amplifier is just magic. Now you can do some amazing things, you know, on your computer or sitting in front of a workstation with monitors, but it just doesn't feel the same as, you know, that beating heart of a tube amp right next to you and that, that feeling you get when you play with a tube amp. So tube amp is definitely the way to go. Now, the mod I'm talking about is changing one tube. Tubes can be really expensive, especially if you replace all the tubes in your amp, but if you just replace the V1 tube, you can really change the character of your amp. And whether you go with, you know, a super expensive boutique or vintage tube or something from Russia or China or something like that, um, yeah, that V1 slot can really change the whole character of your amp, the, the amount of gain that it can get, the character of the gain, all of that stuff can be changed with just 
one simple tube. Or if you go from an AX7 to an AT7, you can clean it right up. The AT7 is a much uh, lower output tube. It just goes straight into the slot and you can clean up your amp for a little bit more headroom or a little bit more kind of clean punch. Or if you want all sorts of different kinds of gain, put an AX7 in there, like I said, from various different countries, a bunch of different manufacturers, completely change the character of your tube amp with just one simple tube. Now mod number four has to do with the guitar electronics and specifically the tone capacitor. Now I think the average player probably doesn't want to like start messing with the guitar wiring. In actuality, it's a very simple mod. You do have to solder, but you don't have to change a lot of things. Now the tone capacitor in the most simplest terms is just a filter for your guitar. So for whatever reason, if you're unhappy with the taper of your tone control or it gets too muddy too quick or it doesn't get warm enough, that's where the tone capacitor comes in. And it's basically just a filter for your guitar and filters out the high end frequencies. So if you're a modern metal player, you might you know, want lots of clarity, lots of high end. And so you're not gonna want a tone capacitor that you know, the instant you touch your tone control warms up your guitar to an, you know, an extreme extent. But you might want, you know, if you want a creamier solo or something like that, an ability to warm up your guitar. So in that you know, instance, you might want a certain tone capacitor. If you're a jazz player, well, you might want it to warm up the guitar almost as soon as you start moving that tone control. And that all is, yeah, controlled by capacitors. And there's a bunch of different kinds. So here is an oil-filled capacitor. This one is from Solo and it's the classic 022. That's sort of like the default. So if you have a guitar, ah, odds are, depending on what kind of pickups you have in there, that might be it. The Orange Drop, another classic for sure. Or there's just like, you know, the disc ceramic ones. So you can go from very, very cheap to really boutique as well with this kind of stuff with the oil filled uh, capacitors and stuff like that. But I would say uh, experiment with this if you're unhappy with either the taper, in other words, how fast it dials in um, the warmer tone and how much uh, warmth you want. So that's really what the capacitor does in layman's terms. Uh, if you're unhappy with the way your tone control interacts with your guitar and your pickups, well, consider changing it. And finally, underrated mod number five. For this one, I was really considering a lot of options, but in the end, I wanted to talk about something that I think would have really transformed the way I learned how to play guitar. And that is strings and picks. <laughs> yes, something really simple, but if I'd done this, it would have changed the way I learned how to play guitar. So for an example, uh, if we talk about strings and finding the best string gauge that you play on for both electric and acoustic, that is worth a million bucks. When I started playing, I just had my dad's beat up acoustic that he had under the bed. I started playing and I loved guitar, but that guitar had super heavy strings on it. The action was very, very high. And if I had taken it to a music shop, got a lighter set of strings on there and they straightened the neck out so the action wasn't so high, it would have accelerated my playing by leaps and bounds. And I would have, you know, felt like, oh, hey, instead of like, you know, needing a vice grips to get my fingers to make a chord, it's much, much easier now. Or on electric, you know, if I'd spent 50 or 60 bucks on a bunch of different, you know, string gauges and brands, well, that would have accelerated my playing by a bunch. Instead, I just played on whatever strings that electric guitar had for like, a year, <laughs> never changed them until something snapped. And then I probably put this, you know, the cheapest $5 set I could get and kept on playing for another year. <laughs> Instead, you know, if you kind of invest a little bit of money and a little bit of knowledge, just reading up on string gauges um, and, you know, disregarding, you know, the tone between a heavy set and a light set and just go with the set that makes you play the best. You know, that's easiest for you to play on, easiest for you to bend, easiest for you to slide, all of those different articulations. It's gonna come much, much easier if you can find, you know, the right string gauge for your hand. You know, the size of your hand, the strength of your hand, all of those things. Uh, spend a little bit of money and just investigate different brands and different gauges of strings. So that's my advice for kind of underrated mod number, number five, especially for new players. I know it sucks to spend that money, but I think, you know, if you're loving guitar and you want to play it as a lifelong pursuit, 
uh, investing in that kind of stuff early uh, can really, really pay off as you become, you know, an intermediate and an expert player. Now, as for picks, same kind of thing. This one's not quite as expensive, but as you can see, there is a vast array of sizes, shapes, and thicknesses of picks. And this is kind of fun, actually. You don't have to spend a ton of money. You can just go to your local uh, music store, drop 10 bucks on a bunch of different picks, a bunch of different thicknesses, a bunch of different textures, um, and just sort of discover, uh, you know, play the same licks on, on, you know, a bunch of different picks and just sort of see which shape and which thickness um, works for you in terms of the coordination between your right hand and your left hand, and of course the interaction with the strings. So that's kind of my final underrated mod, uh, especially if you're a new player. Spend some time finding the right gauge of string for you and the right pick shape and, uh, you know, thickness and grippiness and stuff like that. Um, and if you can kind of hit on those things and bring them all together, man, your playing is going to accelerate so much faster. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. Let me know in the comment section below if there's some other underrated mods that you guys have stumbled across that really either change the tone or make guitar playing easier, but not a lot of people know about or not a lot of people do. Drop them in the comment section. I'm sure everybody would love to read those down there as well. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Other than that, have yourself a great day. Take care.